Hello guys and welcome back to the workshop here in Brunei. It's been a very long time. In fact, YouTube has just told me it's been nearly two months since my last video. And that's because a lot of peer pressure from you guys was to create the motorized 737 throttle quadrant. Now you can see that these parts are massive and these are a four day print. And when these go wrong, that's another four days to try and get it to print or if I make a modification. Today's object is not to do a build video, but it's to show you how I'm progressing. Otherwise, it's gonna be another two months before you see a video, and there is actually a lot happening here. So behind me here are all the parts that I've created already, and we need to take these parts off because these are working prototypes and fit them to the major the major cases here, see how they interact together, if there's enough room and how basically they operate. Are they gonna work? And hopefully, I might get these connected up to the computer to see them actually in automatic mode. Not promising that in this video because I don't know how far we're gonna get, especially if they don't fit. So this is the main left-hand case. This is where the parking brake goes. We've got, this is called the throttle plate. This is where number one throttle assembly goes. Here we've got the speed brake. On the end here is the end plate. In fact, here's one I made earlier in true Blue Peter style. We're gonna marry these two together, like so. And now we've got the full size trim wheel you can see just there. And everything's gotta fit in that gap there. And of course, I also need to see how simple this is to build and how it goes together myself. Because it's all in my head at the moment and uh, when we do get to the build video, it needs to be a logical process. So, starting with the speed brake guide first. There's our two guides fitted, green and yellow. This would be grey normally, however, it's to show and indicate on camera the different parts of the build. It's actually, this runner actually forms part of the case and it helps support the throttle handles from moving side to side. The centre case fits over the top into position like that and you can see it forms the upper part of the, upper part of the case. We've got the start switch micro switch next. So there's our start micro switch and hopefully you can see, if I move my fingers out of the way, that the switch can move in and out to adjust the meshing depth of the activation lever on the start mechanism here. So that will eventually get fitted behind and as the cutoff lever comes down, it pushes against the micro switch and makes contact. I just wanted to show you this stepper motor. It's got a tiny little gear on to make it really easy to drive on the big gear, which is the throttle stem. Uh, it's fully adjustable for meshing in and out by adjusting the two screws here. And this should just screw into position here. Next up is the throttle lever potentiometer. I'll change this for a hall sensor soon. In the meantime, you can see that it slides in and out for meshing depth and is adjustable by this screw here. That is gonna sit through this hole here and we are gonna fasten that down with three screws. Next up, I need to fit some of the speed brake mechanism before it interferes with the throttle. So I'm gonna take the old unit apart, the, the prototype, because I get the parts off it. Well, that was tight. Now this is the speed brake operating mechanism and I'm hopefully you can see that there are bearings front and back. In fact, the other one is in my other hand here and that slots in there. And hopefully this will make the operating mechanism really smooth and make it last. I'm still in two minds if these need to have bearings in as well. If there's too much play or it feels a bit horrid when we're actually actuating it, when it's built, that'll get an upgrade as well. Okay. 
So I actually think we're ready now for the guide runner this side. We've got the cutout for the decal lighting. I'm hoping that this is just going to slot in and we can flick it out. Now I think that's all we can do right now on this side. We can't put the parking brake mechanism in because we need to get the throttle plate attached and the centre mechanism attached. So we're going to flip it over. Next up is the number one throttle lever assembly and stem. There is a lot of mechanics in this part, starting with the thrust reverser lock. Now you can see that you can't pull the thrust reverser up until you push this red button here. So as the throttle is moved into the idle position, it'll push against the nodule. That'll push the button in like it has done now and it releases the first reverser lock back down. As we turn the unit round, we've then got the thrust reverser mechanism. As you can see, that's operating. We've got a little detent spring and roller assembly here, and that tells us, gives us a positive feel of where the thrust reverser needs to be. So then we've got 80% thrust reverser, and we can pull through into 100%, and it goes back in. And of course, it then locks in the off position. And back on the other side, this pot here, is the pot for the thrust reverser mechanism. And the wire goes through the unit, but there is actually a transfer tube in the base of the stem here, which goes all the way to this part here. So it goes all the way through the internals, avoiding all the important parts, all the mechanicals built into the stem, through the throttle handle, and then wherever it needs to go inside the handle. We've actually only got the two buttons now, the autopilot disengage and maximum takeoff. These rollers here are hopefully designed to stop inadvertent side load movement and they're going to push against a dedicated ramp on this part here. So let's see how the throttle feels. Okay, that, that feels really good. You can probably hear it. The stepper motor is acting like a friction brake so when there's no power applied to it it helps like a friction, it holds the throttle really well. You can probably see that the throttle handle is quite floppy and that's because the stem here is printed PLA. That needs to be replaced with an aluminium bar. And again, once again, we can just take this out, line up against a bit of aluminium, cut it to the exact same dimensions. Perfect. I think what we can do there is get the centre case fitted now and that goes on like so. Let's get these bolted together and see how it looks. Well, I'm really pleased with how that's looking. Let's try and get the parking brake in now. And it's done. Just got to get some screws in it. One parking brake done. Let me go and get the servo tester and we can test out the speed brake and the parking brake. Let me show you the parking brake operation. You've got on off, nice positive detent feel to both the on and off positions. When it's on, we can now send a signal to the sim and to drive the servo to turn it off. And there we have it. It works absolutely fantastic. I already knew that did because I've tested that before and you may have seen it on social media. Well, now we're going to attempt to, to motor the speed brake. Now what you've got to understand is, is normally there's a software limit. So I would set this to zero now and then the computer, I would tell the computer where, where to stop the handle. At the moment, this servo can drive this handle for a full 180 degrees, which is way too far and I can break something very simply. In manual mode, it's quite simple. You move it, I would say to the, the detents, but there are no detents and I've forgotten that bit. So I need to add detents to this part, but you would move it to the arm position and in the arm position, the servo will then drive it 
to the on position on landing. Here we go. And I went the wrong way. Of course, this is going to happen a lot quicker. I'm having to go slow to make sure I don't damage anything. And of course, then to go back off, we should be able to drive it the other way into the off position. Done. And again, you can move it manually and even when it goes to the other end to there, the servo would recenter and once more you can move it where you need to. And back she goes, I'm having to go very slowly. I'll show you this again. Once I've got the software limit set up and the max set the maximum rotation, so you can't take it past the drive point. At the moment, it's too easy to break. Well, I don't know what, I think it just, yeah. Okay, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but we're basically entering mechanical lockdown here. And this is a very strong servo. This is a 20 kilo servo. So it's going to have no, it has no problem moving these controls. Again, I'm having to go slowly. But you get the general idea. That's how it's going to work. Ah, oh, well, I had to play. If I can't damage it, then hopefully you can't either. What I've got here, guys, is the left hand end cap. Now this has the trim wheels. These are full size. They've got big old bearings in the end cap here, but they are very heavy and lopsided. Now they're lopsided because they've got all this extra PLA mass. That isn't gonna be an issue because it'll be balanced by the other wheel being 180 degrees apart. It's driven by this gear at the back here and there'll be a drive gear and pinion that comes right across from this side to the other side. So they are combined. Hidden behind the drive gear in blue is the trim indicator here and you can hear the micro switch activated. That's the home switch or the zero point switch for the stepper. So every time we power it on it knows where it is. And that is located right there. There's a little ramp in the wheel. As the stepper motor reaches the zero point the micro switch breaks. So what I need to do first is fit the stepper motor for the trim indicator into position. Oh, no, no, no. Right, guys, we're gonna to have to call it an end, and that's as far as you're gonna see in this prototyping section of the video, because that's just today's effort. Overnight now, I need to go away and print a new end cap. That's a day's print, hopefully 12 hour print if I really put it on fast and that's because I changed the design. I needed to make this mount to here as well, so it adds to the structural integrity of the part, and these holes in this old one are in the wrong place. Also, this drive gear, because this takes a lot of weight, I've printed at 100%. Now that was a six hour print, this one here was printed at 10%. And if you just gently nudge it, because it's at 10%, you can hear it delaminating and it's just cracking inside. Hence, it's the reason, because these trim wheels are actually really heavy. I'm gonna go away tonight and hopefully tomorrow's update will be the end cap fitted and a bit of wiring done just so we can plug it up to the sim and see how this all operates in the real thing before we go any further. And the other problem I've got, this is gonna kill me, is I need to make some more of these trim wheels because I didn't allow enough clearance and I had to drive that in with a hammer to get it to fit. Not good, and because the shaft is so small, yeah, because the shaft is so small, I couldn't take the material away from the shaft, which would have been a nice easy fix. I need to take it away from this mammoth two-day print here. So in the next video, I hope to show you a bit more, but that's what I've been up to for the last two months, six weeks. 
It's been a mammoth undertaking getting this all right, and I'm really pleased with how far in operation this has got. I can already see that hopefully this is going to be quite phenomenal. I mean, just in sheer size, it's pretty massive and impressive. Got to go away, print the, the handles, the speed brake guide that sits here, and I've also got to correct the detents. I want to have positive detents so you can feel where it's in the arm position and in the up position. I'll catch you later, guys. Sim out.